I didn't want a marriage, I wanted a wedding. Why do I have to get over him? What does that mean? Would you still say that marriage is something that's attractive to you? I see that face. I see that. Wait, 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 hold on. What, what you got? What you got? What's your thoughts on that one? I mean. What did forgiveness and peace look like to you after divorce? It's funny because we marry people, we get divorced, and you think that's it. But I left the marriage. I wanted somebody to save me. Only the truth makes you free. What's your relationship <laughs> status? What was your answer? I don't share. I don't share. <laughs> <laughs> that's the marriage that I want, and that might not look like. Welcome to Hardly Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, here with another episode of my co-host, Ryan Ketchins. I'm feeling that energy. I'm yeah. feeling it all over. That yeah. nice feminine presence, the queen energy. It's in the building. Yeah. Today it's a little bit different because she's not sitting here with us in person in the Hardly Initiated studios, but she's here in spirit. Let me tell you, y'all have been asking us through email, DM, comment, and every possible way that the family, the initiates, can reach out to us to speak about co-pairing, to speak about blending these families, because y'all know some of y'all situations are a little ratchet, all right? But guess <laughs> what? We have went ahead and found somebody who's actually living this life and going to give you something that you're going to walk away with something very valuable here today, and we doing this with the beautiful... Sheree Zampino, welcome Aww. to Hardly Initiated. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, guys. I am so happy and honored to be here with you both. Thank you for having me. I mean, listen, you look good. The light in his own point. I think yeah. I think you you ready. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. I was like, let's go. Let's do this. Y'all, I prepped up before the show started because, you know, y'all know how we get down to Hardly Initiated. We having these real conversations Nothing is sugar-coated, and we got to get some answers to this because mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest, Cherie, our families in 2024 as a whole, mm -hmm. it ain't really doing so well. Wow. When you're looking at the grand scheme of how many of us have grown up or growing up or just these families you know, that we see on a day-to-day -day basis, we're struggling. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of the times... It's because it can get so complex because it's hard enough just to raise your family. But when you're talking about blending mm -hmm. a family, that can be tricky. And for those of you who don't know, I mean, you've blended families with one of the most famous families <laughs> ever because your former husband, for those of you who might not know, was actually Will Smith. And you guys had a child together. Mm -hmm. And how, how old were you, by the way, when you had your first child? I was 25. Okay. 24 actually five days before my 25th birthday okay oh wow hell of a birthday a gift yeah okay baby baby and baby were you were you already married oh yeah we were married yep we got engaged and then i got pregnant while we were engaged so i was three months um pregnant when when i got married okay so we were engaged six months trey was on his way <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and how, yeah. how long were you guys, you know, married um, up until the point of divorce? Just three years. So it was a short marriage. Okay. Yeah. Now, I know it's, it's, you might say it's a short marriage, but it's a lot of emotion tied up at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, families get tied. We now brought a child into this world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now we're talking about uh, this is the point I think is important part, uh, part for us to start because I yeah. think that's that's probably the beginning of where the family start to get blended right at that point of divorce. Yeah. Because I think before you even talk about bringing somebody else into, you know, new partners into it, splitting different ways, I think there's this level of forgiveness mm -hmm. that has to take place, this yeah. level of peace that has to be brought between two people mm -hmm. before you can have a healthy situation afterwards. What did, you know, forgiveness and 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 peace look like to you? after divorce um a process you know it's just it's a it's a it's a choice you make an immediate choice but then you got to go through the process and you you don't just forgive one once and it's done it's not a one and done forgiveness is a moment by moment decision 
Mm. You know, you choose to forgive, you choose to release. And then you realize that we're on the same team. You see what I'm saying? We're, we're mm-hmm. team Trey. So we're one. And it's funny because we marry people, we get divorced and um, you think that's it. But when you have a child, the marriage is, is kind of insignificant because y'all are stuck with each other for a very, very long time. Mm. You know, so you have to, I'm not saying don't mourn the marriage, definitely mourn the marriage, but then you have to, it has to have a process. It's like, you got to get off that mountain and like shift. Okay. Now let's do this as blended, you know, as a blended family, as co-parents, because we started out, we were just co-parenting, you know, uh, Willow and Jaden came years later. Mm. So it was, um, it was the three of us for a long time. It was me, Will and Jada, actually the four of us. And then, you know, of course, Trey. So. I think that makes a, it makes a lot of sense because, you know, once a kid is involved, you know, a child is involved, then it's really not final, you know, no matter what happens in the course. And I'm very curious about this because I was actually speaking to a, a young lady at the gym and she just came in. She was just really excited and she just had this glow about her. Right. I see her all the time. But this day in particular was was different. So I asked, I'm like, yo, why are you in such a great mood? And she said, listen, I'm going to just go ahead and share this with you. It's a lot of information, but I just really got over this relationship I was in this, Mm. you you know, and I asked her, I said, okay. I said, well, you know, how long ago was the relationship? Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, it ended three years ago. Mm. And I was very, very confused at that point. And I'm like, you know, what exactly does that mean? And she said, I didn't realize how much that relationship had impacted me this three years that we haven't even been together. Mm. And she said, I had a conversation with the guy I was formerly with, and now I have closure. So mm. I'm, I'm very curious about that, particularly with your situation. And just in general, mm-hmm. what does closure look like after you know, you've been in a relationship with somebody so long and what is it that you have to do to, or, or how do you go about seeking closure? You know, I think, you know, communication for sure, but it's hard to communicate when you are two different people. Think about you're not the same people going through a divorce that then when you got married, mm-hmm. you see what I'm saying? Those right. are completely different people. So you kind of have to give yourself a little space and a little beat and patient, be compassionate with yourself, give yourself time to unwind, do what you need to do, vent, not in front of your child, not with your child. You know, you get a friend because you got a lot of stuff that you got to release. Sometimes just releasing it, you know, and kind of freeing yourself from it. And um, and then after that, you know, I don't know. To me, it was like it was just it was a mental shift. There was really I see I, I left the marriage. So it would be see it's different if I had to deal with like an infidelity, Mm. say there was an infidelity and, you know, he left me for another woman. Well, that's, that, that's probably going to take a little longer to get over than if you made the choice. But nonetheless, the person that I had to forgive the most was myself. Mm. Was myself. That's probably the hardest person to forgive too, right? Listen, (laughs) and until you release yourself, you really can't release anybody else. Mm. Do you do you think, you know, when it comes to uh, children being involved, right, do you think it's necessary for you to redevelop a genuine concern or care for the, you know, the person that's also helping you raise your your child? Well, to me, it never went away. Mm. I, I, I will always love him. Always, you know, and then to think that. The t- see, see, we make things mean something they don't mean. The purpose of Will and I coming together was not to have a marriage, clearly. It was to birth something into the world. It was to bring forth a son, you know, whose name is Willard Carroll Smith III. So that's why we call him Trey. So you got you, you have to let things kind of be what they are. Mm make peace with certain things. And I don't have to, why do I have to get over him? What does that mean? Like, I mean, I'm not trying to be sexually engaged with him, but definitely friendship, love, honor, 
you know? Absolutely. I don't, why would I get over? Why would I, what what do I have to get over? Mm. You know, now it's different if you're still hoping to have a relationship and not that you can't, not that you can't have that hope, but if it's disrespectful, if there's other people involved, if it's interfering with stuff, you know, then it's a problem. You know, speak, speaking on that, did you, yeah. ha- did you have any of that when the divorce was over? Did you just, were you a hundred percent ready for it to be over? Did you have a bit of that hope? It was okay. So before, so when I initiated the divorce and just being young and not really understanding what a marriage was, I didn't want a marriage. I wanted a wedding. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I wanted a day of, you know, just where I could be a princess. And you think you buy into the fairy tale and you think that that's going to be your life. And when it falls short of that, you're so devastated. You're so mm. disappointed and you think you got it wrong. You chose wrong. Wow. But yeah. And after a while, when you keep having all these failed relationships, you got to look at the common denominator. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That might be the missing, Listen. the missing, the missing link right there. You just pissing people off just now, just so you know. All right. Listen, the only listen, only the truth makes you free. Only the truth makes you free. So I'm sorry, Ryan. You asked me something, and I went somewhere else. No, 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 no. no, no. no. You Honestly, you had that okay. was that was great because yeah. you said something that was heavy about not wanting an actual marriage, but the wedding itself. I think that's so that's so important yeah. to say. Because I don't know if many of us even know what we really mean when we say we want marriage. Because I think many of us really do want the wedding, the bells, the the whistles and everything else we've been sold to want in that engagement. And many of us that watch the show, our initiates, y'all know, you see what really comes with that marriage. It ain't many bells and whistles (laughs) besides the day itself. It's hard work. But but let me ask you this: At that point in time, do you do you feel like you were even ready? No. Okay. Absolutely not, because I wanted somebody to save me, save me from myself. Mm. You know, complete me. You know, all my shortcomings and dysfunction. Come on, help me, dra- drag me out of that. Be my savior. You can't put that on anybody. You know, you wow. you set you set everything up to fail at that point everything up to fail. And that's how I went in. That's really how I went in. I bought into the fairy tale. Now, here's the thing. You in this place now, you're already married, yeah. you're in this place. Things are not going very well, and a lot of people are in that place are going to be in that place in marriage. Do you feel like there's anything cuz you said you initiated the divorce? Yeah. Is there anything you could have done? Self-work, therapy, I don't know, going away, you know, for a few weeks or months, getting yourself together. Is there anything you could have done to become whole, to make that work? Or was that, was it irredeemable? I mean, yes, but that process has been, has taken me 35 years. Mm. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) That makes sense. Right. You want to wait for that? (laughs) But, you know, I didn't know at the time. And what happens is you're running away from yourself. So you're pointing the finger. You're projecting. You're the problem. You're the problem. And, again, you have to really – it's never this. It's always, okay, what's what's going on in here? What's happening? So I, I said I, we, we – neither of us, neither of us were, 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 um, were ready. You know, I didn't – so let me tell you. So now where I am – when I'm looking, cause I'm single. So if I'm getting to know somebody, one of the things that has to be clear to me before, you know, we agree to spend the rest of our lives together, whatever that looks like, um, I need to see what your weaknesses are because I need to know if I have the capacity to deal with what you need to help you heal because we're signing up for each other's healing process. Mm. Do I have the capacity to help you heal in the most excellent, loving, gracious, kind way? Do I have that? Is your heart safe in my hands? Because there are some things that I don't have the capacity for. Like I dated a guy who was a yeller. I don't have the capacity for that at all. I will hurt you. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah. And, you know. I'm, I'm just very curious about this. You know, after your experience, would mm -hmm. you still say that marriage is something that's attractive to you? It, it, it my partner, finding my partner and my partner finding me as women, we say we're supposed to be found, but being in union with, with, with my person, with my person um, and having a monogamous commitment. So I, I don't know, I don't think I would need a piece of paper. Mm. Interesting. Really yeah. <laughs> wow. Interesting. So <laughs> what, oh, let, let's go back to this real quick before we still, move yeah. forward. Still monogamous. <laughs> Still monogamous. Still monogamous. What do, what do I you don't feel? Share. I don't share. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not mad at you. Yeah, I think I'm most not ladies would, would share that sentiment. Facts. Yeah. Most fellas too. The fellas right. ain't sharing either. Right. You're right about that. But <laughs> right. When, when we t when you say the piece of paper, well, like what what does the what does the paper cloud or confuse for you to feel that way? I don't. I don't want to say. I. I I don't want to say it clouds anything. I don't want to look at it from that perspective, but I'm saying it's not something that I need. Mm. I need the commitment. I need, you know, and, and the trust and all the other elements that come with it where we're making a commitment to one another to be in this together, to do this. That's, that's, that's the marriage that I want. And that might not look like marriage in the traditional sense. You know, mm. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. Well, look, when you pull yeah. this off, we got to get the follow-up. I want right. the follow-up story See how that look. on that one because I've heard a couple guys <laughs> say that, um, but I think mm -hmm. it's different hearing a woman say it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I, I've heard a, a, a guy, brother, who ha has um, been married, divorced, and he said the exact same thing. He said, hey, this yeah. time around, I don't know if I want to, you know, uh, uh, get married with, you know, the marriage license and paperwork and all that. I just really want to have that genuine relationship with a woman. And, um, you know, everything else can come after that. And uh, he when we talked, we talked about that on the show. The lady, you should have seen him in the chat. Oh, God. oh, hell yeah. no. <laughs> I can't believe that. You but, it, know? But, but it does. It does feel a little different coming from a woman. It does feel yeah. a little bit different. It, it I does. Want that, that, like you said, something genuine. I want that real heart connect. I want that real heart connection. If we have that real heart connection, I'm good understood that's the yeah. essence that's the essence of the relationship anyway right the yes the connection with that person and a lot of times we get married hoping that we'll get that at some point mm. you know and um and i don't know i, I it's it's one thing to want to see people grow because we're, we're both in this we should be sharpening each other we should be growing together but i have to accept you as you are if you never change am i going to be okay with you yes you know but women what we do is we get projects we take men as projects and we try to you know dust them off and you know make them be what we want them to be and we, I, I think we can destroy you in the process. Mm. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm very curious about this because uh, we, we've had, we, we do call-ins on our live show. So yeah. we'll have a, you know, a bunch of fellas and the ladies calling in about you know, very specific things in their relationship. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I found to be recurring is women specifically who are unhappy in a marriage for whatever reason. Yeah. and are choosing to maintain the relationship because children or child is involved. Do you think that it's ever a reason to maintain a relationship that you have no longer, you know, no longer have interest in for any reason, particularly if you have kids? I, I, um, I think that's admirable if, if you're doing it because, you know, you, you still have hope. You're not like going through the motions, you know what I'm saying? Where you're really doing the work and you're really trying. And there's hope that there will be reconciliation within this, you know, marriage. Then absolutely. I would just say, just be authentic, you know? And of course, if you're in a relationship where there's physical abuse, then, you know, it's better. 
for everybody to, you know, make that physical separation. Maybe you can still work on the marriage, but definitely not from the same location. Hmm. But yeah, I don't, I don't want to judge anybody's process. You know, everybody has the right to do it the way they think is right and best, you know, for, for them. But I think anytime you stay in it to try to, like I said, there's hope and you're trying to work it out and you're putting in the effort and you're putting in the work and you're trying to honor the commitment that you made, you know, then I, I, I don't see anything wrong with that at all. Just, uh, just so, so we can, yeah. so, so we can get some context to this as well. After the, the divorce took place, how quickly did, uh, you know, uh, Jada actually come into the picture after the divorce? No, after Jada was in the picture when we were um, going through the divorce, right? So you asked me a question earlier, was there ever a time that I, you know, was like, oh my God, <laughs> like, I want you back. And it was like, I filed and then it was a few months later and I was, I, I started to go to a therapist. Mm. I was talking to her about, you know, my relationship and just unpacking some things, childhood, all that. And I realized, damn, I didn't try as hard as I could have. So I couldn't look at my son in the face every day and know that I didn't try as hard as I thought I did. Cause I was like, I tried, I did. And I didn't really, you know, so I went back to him and I said, listen, I said, I realized that, you know, I, I just didn't try to, to, to a, to a degree that I'm content with. I said, you know, can we, can we stay in it and, and, and try to make it work? And he said, no. And I was mm. like, Whoosh. wow. Wow. I'm not sure. I, I'm... Was really, I was relieved. I was so wow. relieved. Wow. So you really, I mean, that's, you were incredible. hoping that that's, that was I the was, response. No, I wasn't hoping that was a response, but I wasn't mad that that was a response because mm. the easier thing to do was to walk away. Right. Yeah. And to say, oh, I tried, son. Your mama tried. You know, then to get back and grind it out and really do the work. So relieved for the wrong reasons, of course. Yeah. That's incredible courage for you to go back and attempt to have that conversation or yeah. just to have that conversation. I can't imagine how many people would, would be open to doing that because so many emotions get involved, especially at the point where attorneys and, you know, the court system gets involved for you to go back. is like that was big. It yeah. was. Yeah, it was. Thank and you. and yeah. see, here's the thing. A lot of people would be absolutely pissed off at <laughs> the process. You going through divorce and another woman is already involved and sometimes those things can be you know points of contention and you know um why you can have issues when it comes to blending the families and co-parenting because yeah. like why this person already here we didn't even have time to do this and that did you yeah. feel did you feel a bit of that like it was too yeah. soon to bring somebody else in no it's funny because like when i look at it because it was only like a few months after because i think it took about six months once you file for it to be final okay. but it felt like when i filed it felt like it was over for me you see what i mean mm. so it didn't feel like it was too soon you know and i remember and i've told this story before where he was gonna introduce you know trade and jada one weekend and I, I didn't even think, well, we're still, you know, we're still married. And I, none of that. We didn't have any of those conversations, you know. So, of course, I was like, just the idea, it could have been 10 years later, just the idea of another woman around my son, <laughs> you know, that was a tough one. And because it, it wasn't, I never felt like my position was threatened, like as his mm -hmm. mama's mom, nobody can take that, take my place in that, in that area. I'm his mother, that's who I am. But is she gonna be good to my kid? You know what I mean? You're gonna have somebody, they're gonna treat him the way he deserves to be treated. That's what I was concerned about, you know? How so. much influence do you have on that? When, when, you know, you got, you know, your former significant other in a new relationship, how much influence on the evaluation process do you have, if any at all? Um, you shouldn't have any. <laughs> like, none. 
That's his choice. Mm. And I mean, I, I got in there and, and um, I told him I didn't think, I don't know if I ever said this before. <laughs> good. But I sure told him, <laughs> I don't think that's a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I bet you did. Now, 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 was that, now, now, here's the thing. Was that based on genuine observation or was that just emotion that made you want to say that? No, I think it was, you know, at the time it was uh, just just being in friendship circles and whatnot. Mm. I just judged. I judged her. I judged her. I mm. judged her harshly. And I didn't feel that she was um, worthy as her book of my son. Mm. Pun intended. Right. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so. What, and, and see, that can be tricky because I think, you know, mo that's what you're supposed in, in yeah. some cases, that's what you're supposed to do. Right. That's your cub. That's your baby. Yeah. This other person you don't know is now about to have influence on their life, on their mind, on their thoughts, on their yeah. development. So to some degree, you have to use your best discernment to figure out if this person is qualified to be around your child. And I see that face. I see that. Wait, 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 hold on. What, what you got? What you got? I mean, what's your thoughts on that one? I mean, yes, but no. Hmm. If if I was that concerned, I should have stayed. Mm. <laughs> wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I left. I don't get to dictate who he dates and who he chooses. I don't get. I don't get to dictate that. It, it, or even the timing of it. I left. I don't get to do that. So, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, if, yes, if I felt that, you know, my son wasn't being treated well or, you know, with, with, with love or grace and, and patience and kindness, of course I would have spoke on that. Of course. You know, that was my only thing. Like with 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 Jada, I'm like, I'm not getting caught up in nothing other than she just she needs to treat my son right. She treats my son right. We're good. But how much vetting has to happen before you that this person is introduced to your child? Like, is it should that other person at least introduce formally you to this new partner? before you you know this person is consistently around your child or like you said is that not even something that I, needs to happen at that point i did no i i understand i hear what you're saying and i don't think that would be i mean that's a great way to do it if you want to do it that way if you want to do whatever but he out of respect came to me first it wasn't like he just did it and then i found out after so i thought i was grateful for that right okay. you know that i got the heads up you know but it wasn't like you know what do you think i'm gonna it was like this is what's happening <laughs> this is what i'm doing this gotcha. weekend gotcha. and you know that's fair it's his life it's fair and i said okay i'm having a flashback tell, tell, listen I, tell us about I, it I think I said, you don't think it's too soon? Right. I think I did say that. I think that's a fair assessment, though. Yeah. yeah. You know, because, I mean, introducing, you know, somebody to these different energies. Now, Trey at this time was still very young. Trey was only, what, what three. Three, three years old. You know, so. Yeah. And that's, that's, that is still old enough to have influence on a child. So, I mean, I, I think that's a natural concern to think, yo, like. Are we moving a little too fast here? Yeah. Should we, you know, should we take it slow? Should, you know, we keep her in the other room while he's over there? Right, right. <laughs> should we go ahead? You should she stay upstairs while you know? I I, th I think that's that's valid, and that's why yeah. I want you know I I want to have this conversation with you, yeah. and when you consider it, I think there are certain to some degree boundaries that may need to be set when yeah. you're now introducing another person into your life because now. When we talk yeah. about even things that go as far as discipline, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, what, how are these conversations had? Are you guys, are you just like, as these things happen and progress talking about it? Are you guys having these conversations up front about, hey, here, how this needs to happen? How did you figure out, like, you know, the nuances of 
what Jada had the right and not the right to do with your child. That was, you know, that was kind of trial and error. And that happened over, you know, over time. Um, everything did move very, very quickly. You know what I mean? And boom, we, we now have this blended family. And I remember us meeting. This is this was our first introduction. Um, my son came home, so he was with his dad over a weekend, and that's when he, you know, met met Jada. And when he came home, I said to him, because I didn't want to interrogate my child, you know, I didn't want to do that. And I said to him, I said, so, I said, um, did you have a nice time? With, you know, with dad? And he said, yes, I did, mommy. And I said, and you met Jada? He said, yes, I met Miss Jada. I said, okay. I said, well, how did you like her? He said, I really like her, mom. He said, can we get her a gift? It's like, what? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I know that one. Yeah, that, one right that was, that was a little bit. <laughs> and I said, oh, I said, well, I said, um, yeah, I said, we can do that because he knows he had seen like when we like people and we love mm -hmm. people. That's how yeah. we show our love and appreciation and we give gifts. So I regifted her like a little candle or something I had in the closet. I said, I just, I, I just, I don't have it to go out and buy a new <laughs> right. gift. I don't have that. <laughs> but I bought a card. And I signed the card and I said, thank you for making a good impression on my son. Sharif. Wow. And I put that in a little, you know, bag. I wrapped the gift, wrapped the candle. And the next time he went, he had, you know, his little gift for her okay. and the card for me. So that was the olive branch letting her know it is about him. Period. So I think that really um, was the gift that made a way, you know, how your gift makes room for you. I think that was the perfect way for us to start off because it was like, I just, uh, I came in peace, you know, I'm coming in peace. I think that's really yeah. dope. Uh, we, we recently had a uh, Shahrazad, uh, Sister Shahrazad Ali on the show, right? Mm -hmm. And she talked about how particularly young men learn so much about their fathers, whether they're in the household or not from the mother. Mm -hmm. So I'm very curious in times where, you did, you know, did have a bit of frustration or on some levels were dissatisfied with what was happening in the family mm -hmm. dynamic. How did you go about, you know, communicating if you did communicating that to your son or mm -hmm. how did you go about shielding him from learning certain things that was happening that you might not have been happy with? Well, um, no, I never had those conversations in front of him. And the reason why is because those conversations happened in front of me as a kid. Mm. And I remember feeling like, oh, wow, you know, I, you feel like you feel torn. Yep. You feel like you have to pick a side and you don't ever want your child to feel like that. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I had that understanding. So no, I never, never, never said a, anything bad in front of um, Trey about his father ever. And I don't talk bad about him anyway. Even to, you know what I mean? I might vent a couple of times when he's getting on my nerves, but <laughs> mm -mm. yeah, for the most part, you know, it's like you, I think that's a part of the responsibility in the co-parenting is to cover one another because again, you're on the same team. Those are his parents. It's one. You guys are one. <laughs> you are one. So a house divided amongst itself cannot stand, you know? And if you're not agreed, you can't get anywhere. You can't walk together. So there has to be that respect. There has to be respect. Were there any, and by the way, that was super mature of you. Yeah, glad to, you shared that. To handle the situation, how you, you know, handled it in that way. But was there any point, you know, where you felt like you did not agree about how certain things are being done in that household? Because that can also happen in co-parenting. Like, that ain't really how we do things over here. And I don't like how that's happening. And if that did happen, how did you go about, you know, resolving or dealing with that situation? It's a conversation, you know, and it's a respectful conversation. But I think you you, you can't go into it expecting somebody to do what you say or do it the way you do it. It's very arrogant. 
It's very, very arrogant. Because what happens, you think, I'm thinking I do it better. I'm doing this thing better than you. So you should do it the way I'm doing it. And now we're competing. Mm. You know what I mean? And now I'm judging and I'm making you wrong. So you kind of got to, yeah, you, 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 you cannot, it is not advantageous to, you know, to approach it that way. And that's going to happen. You know, you got divorced for a reason. Right. Right. You, you're not together for a reason. <laughs> Clearly, there are a bunch of things you didn't agree on. Yep. You didn't see it the same way. You know, maybe the compatibility wasn't there. So you're already you just have to be again. You have to be respectful. And hopefully this was my hope. OK, so husband and wife. No, but let's be let's be some great co-parents. Mm. Let's kill that. You know, let's let's get in there and really do a good job at doing that since this we didn't do so good at this, you know, but um, but yeah, you got but you have to be respectful. You know, you can't call hot, you know, and you did it that that, that. got to watch your tone, especially as women. We have to really watch our tone. <laughs> Big facts. <laughs> okay. Watch your tone. And some things if you used to having a certain tone. When you text something, you might not even be texting it in that tone, but because it's normally your tone, that's when they read the text, they're going to read it in your normal tone, mm. on the phone, have a conversation. You know, I think that's because we, we text way too much now. We do. And there's too much room for misunderstanding in a text. So I would say with sensitive issues like that, never do them by text, you know. Um, and it, it's a shame, you know, and some people might say, well, what if you're not speaking? That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The two grown people that made a child can't get on the phone and have a conversation with one another for the sake of that child. You know, that's that's yeah. And Sheree, that's it happens, unfortunately, yeah. more often, you know, than, than we like to talk about that those two people. For whatever reason, you know, usually petty reasons, emotional uh, emotions, yeah. and you know every other reason that the child gets is is second fiddle to the uh, emotions, you know, at play yeah. at this point. Um, See, that's the key. Second fiddle, you got to shift it. You, you got to put yourself in the background now. It's not about you anymore. You had your chance. You had your run. Relationship didn't work out. It's about this child or these children. You know, it's not about me anymore. Let me ask you about yeah. this because, and shout out to my mom, by the way, because I'm thinking. Wait, about, I'm sorry. Can I say something? Yeah, the yeah, way of course. The camera, wait, it looks like y'all are holding hands. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you played us. No, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. Thank you. We, we ain't that close. <laughs> right. Hey, fix the camera, Lano. Fix the camera. <laughs> I thought it was just a kumbaya moment. <laughs> nah, nah, you, you ain't hitting us like that. <laughs> Got us in here holding hands. <laughs> Oh, no, we're going we to edit yes. that one out. We're going to edit that one out. <laughs> no, we might need to keep that one. That's funny. That's funny. But go ahead. No, so sh sh I was saying shout out to my mom because I'm thinking about my mom, right? And I'm thinking about, you know, kind of as I was growing up, I would develop preferences for who I like to spend my time with, right? Now, in this case, it was my grandmother. I just love spending time with my grandmother. and But I remember that anytime something would come up where I would want to actually spend time at my grandma's house instead of with my mom, it would just be some kind of beef going on, you know. So, you know, as, you know, Trey, he's growing up and he's deciding how he prefers to spend his time. Was there ever any moments where you were kind of like, man, I know he wants to do this, but I would just much prefer him be with me. And how did you express that or how did you deal with that emotion? Oh, yeah, I definitely had that. So when he was... 14 and I was getting ready to get married again and we were going to move to um to San Diego and I was looking at schools you know Trey goes with me Trey comes with me and and you know Trey was with me the majority of the time so it's just it's a natural you know that's it's a natural transition he goes where I go and then we had I'll say this Will and I had joint custody because that's not something I ever fought him on I was like yeah he's just as much yours as he is mine so legally I can't take my son out of the state but I'm going to San Diego I'm not 
going out of the state. So, you know, I just told him, this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. And nothing has to change for you and your son. You can see each other just as much as you do now. I said, however, he is not going to go back and forth. That's something you will have to do, mm. you know. So anyway, so um, Will and Trey got together and <laughs> Will... <laughs> Right. <laughs> and Will, you know, just said to Trey that, you know, hey, I'm not going to work for a year. So got options, bro. You can stay here mm. and not move to San Diego. And then you keep your same school. You know, I mean, he's thinking Trey is like, yeah, I don't have to change anything. Keep my same school, my friends, the whole bit, you know. Because he wasn't, he knew he was moving and he wasn't like, I can't wait to move. But he wasn't like, you know, he was pretty, just, you know, at times you could kind of, but for the most part, he was fine. Mm -hmm. It was just something that I feel like he just accepted. Just, it, it just is what it is. So anyway, so then Trey comes to me and now he's like, I got options. He's coming at me like that. Why are you making me? Da, 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 da. Oh, mm, mm. and then it was funny because it was Mother's Day mm. and he gave me a card. We were at church and he just gave me the card like this and the card had Cherie on it. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> I was like, is this little boy serious right now? So he just he went through a process there where he was just angry at me like resented me like and just and then would say like just why are you making me go i don't want to go with you why would i want to leave here i don't want to go with you i was like Ugh. and it hurt my feelings so much because i'm thinking like i've been the most constant thing in your life mm. so i started to resent him back wow I didn't even know that was possible, but I started to like, I like I had, and I, I had a, it is what it is. We laugh about it today, but I had a, I had a, I had a really bad mommy moment mm. when I kind of called him a little ungrateful mother. <laughs> oh, if, if that's, if that's what it was, my mama had a few oh, of yeah. them. Oh, that's my, <laughs> Maybe a little yeah. bit worse than that. Right, right. Man. That, that, don't worry. That's a very common moment. <laughs> Right. In motherhood. And ungrateful Negro. <laughs> right. Right. I was like, and he looked at me and he said, oh, really nice for a church lady. I was marrying a pastor. <laughs> Wait, how, how old was Trey at this point? 14. At 14. Oh, he had a slick little mouth. Oh, bruh, the, the 14, they all got it. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's when you start. Yeah. That's when you start getting slick. Yeah. Snappy with it. Yeah, young man, too, so. So, yeah, he got me. He got me with that one. And I was just like, oh, I don't understand this, you know, and it, it really it was just it was heartbreaking. And then I'll tell you, I just really I was praying, you know, just asking God to just give me work it out, give me understanding. And, I, you know, I'm just this is I've never been in this position with my son before where my heart is not right towards him. His heart is not right towards me. And the Holy Spirit allowed me to see it in a way that I got it. And I just was able to make peace with it instantly. So what I was thinking is that what Trey was doing is he was choosing his friends, his school, his father. My, my mother was alive at the time, his grandmother. He's choosing all of them over me because I'm here. And the Holy Spirit said, you're a given, you're a constant. The same language I used in my head, you're a constant in his life. So he's thinking if I stay, I have them and I have you. Mm -hmm. He's never making a choice, them or you, you're a given. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I get it. And then I was able to have compassion for him and even empathy and I got it. And he came in one day and this is right after I got that revelation. His whole tone changed. Now he doesn't know, but God just did something. And he came to me and he said, mom, he said, you know, he said, I've been with you my whole life. He said, I really want the opportunity to live with my dad. Wow. Done. I can't stand in the way of that. As soon as he said that, I said, okay, baby, we'll work it out. I have to give him that. He deserves that. 
But man, I would cry like a baby every time. So what I ended up doing was um, I didn't move to San Diego full time. So I kept my house in Chatsworth and I was back and forth. So I'm the one that did the back and forth. <laughs> I did that for eight years. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yes. You know, I think that's a really good sign though, but, but even though it, it feels, it hurts when it's happening, yeah. but I think it's a really great sign for a young man to be at that point, separating from his mom at that point and going off to explore the world and whatever that might look like. You know, sometimes that might be, you know, going off playing sports and he's after school and on the weekends with new people and new friends with his coaches and doing these different things to now learn himself as a man versus a man who overly cleaves to his mom Mm -hmm. in that phase of his life and becomes a mama's boy. And he ends up being handicapped and overly protected and gets smacked in the face by the world when he gets there. Mm. So, you know, the thing about it is that actually is a a, a very healthy, natural progression for a man in his earlier years to be close to his mom, but then might want to move and be with his father as he really matures into the man that he's becoming. Yeah. You, you know, so that I, I, I that was I, I see how it's hard though on the mama side. Yeah. So Sheree, you know, you you got yeah. this young man, right? You raised this young man, mm-hmm. and I'm sure you know you, you like you talked about. I think you were um, getting ready to marry a pastor, right? Yeah. So now you bring in another man into your son's life. So what does that ev- or what did that evaluation process look like? Are you looking for somebody who has these fatherly skills? Is it anything in particular? that you were thinking, hey, this man must have if I'm to bring him into our lives. Yeah, he he has to be one, he has to be okay with blended families because that's what we are, you know, right. and we're able to come together and during the holidays and celebrate birthdays. Now we don't have to do all the holidays, you know what I mean? But, you know, birthdays, yeah, everybody's gonna be there. So he has to be secure. You know, he has to be secure because I know, too, that situation comes with a lot. Some men don't want to deal with that. You know, just Will Smith's ex. They just don't want to deal. And, and and that's good. I would rather you disqualify yourself so I don't have to, like, spare me, you know. But um, it, I, I looked at his character. He had great character. He, um, good man godly man loved my son you know was very patient that was important for me too because trey when when my son was little he was very rambunctious you know he had a lot of energy just kind of out of control a little bit and so you know somebody who was patient with 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 that and he was all those things and he was a great addition he was a great addition to our family dynamic you know and got along with Will, Jada, that was important too, you know. So when, so how long did you, you know, date him before you felt comfortable to actually, you know, bring him around your son? We dated for five years, but I honestly don't remember. It was probably a few months, like when I knew, like, yeah, I think this is, this can, this can really go somewhere. So maybe six months. And is that the prerequisite? Do you think that somebody should only bring someone around your child when you see that this has real long-term potential in the relationship? Is that it? I think I think so. I mean, that that that's a I lean towards that um, that philosophy where you know when I've identified that this is somebody that I really you know, can can see building something with and being a part of my family, then, because you don't want to confuse your kids. Why, why, you know, have all these people in and out of their lives? Because kids get attached too. Kids get attached to people and then they're gone. It's, you know what I mean? So constant losses, make sure you date him, approve him. Like, what did they say? Like, you shouldn't be, you and your kids shouldn't be dating the same person. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? So make the decision. And then once you make it, de- and, and things happen, you know, it, it might not last. But I think to start with that, to have that as your foundation where I see this long term, or this is going to be something and then bring your children in, you know, 
and see how he so you ain't really made a concrete decision yet. Then there's another decision to mm. make because you got to see the way he interacts with your children and your child. And then, you know, if that's gravy, if that works, then let's do it. I think to hear that you were dating in general is very encouraging, yeah. uh, particularly for the mothers out there. And I think, I, you know, because I'm thinking about, you know, how I grew up and my sister and I was involved in everything. My sister was a four sport athlete. I was in every club. My mom was extremely active. And now when I look back on it, it was in this sacrificial way. She literally mm. lived for me and my sister. So dating mm. was not even a thing. Like, I don't, it was no man that we would have to, you know, try to see if we liked. There was no point in time where I'm upset because, you know, this dude is around the house. It was nothing. Like, she literally yeah. only lived for us. So what was it, you know, Beautiful. you know, within you that gave you the courage, the motivation, the energy to do everything for your son, but then also still make time and effort into trying to live for yourself as well? Because I always wanted love. Mm. You know, I always wanted that union with with with, you know, with with somebody to to just you know have that heart to heart my person to build to to love to to help one another to stand by each other's side you know i always had that and i told you too back then i still wasn't healthy i was still looking to be rescued so this wasn't this wasn't the one so i need somebody else that's going to rescue mm -hmm. me so that's kind of what it was so it's really i was dating out of desperation mm -hmm. You know, a lot of it was dating out of desperation. And then as you start to do the work and, you know, unravel some things and get to the bottom of things within you again, because like I said, if you're the common denominator, you have to look at that. Your marriage didn't didn't work. So even if you can say he he was no good, he was doing X, Y, Z and whatever, but you picked him. <laughs> so, like, you got to look at that. What, what did you miss? What didn't you see? You know, so. Yeah, you, you definitely have to, um, you have to, you have to do the work. But to, yeah, I've always had a sense of, you know, like, I, I want that. And I think that's what motivated me. But my son came first, mm. you know, my son, oh, my son came first, period, you know, and everybody and everybody knew that. And if you could get on board with that, cool. You know, nothing ever took time away from him. So I, I want to ask this, too, and just also to give mm -hmm. the audience uh, a bit of understanding about yourself and where you are, because you probably gave the greatest response I've ever heard to the relationship status question. <laughs> and and I, want, I want the people to hear, because when I asked you, what's your relationship <laughs> status, what was your answer? Ready. Oof. Yeah, I like that one. Ready. Yeah. Re first of all, I thought when she first said, I thought it was a question like, ready? I was like, yeah, I'm ready. She was like, no, ready. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, she's ready. Now, here's the thing. Ready. You said that after the divorce, it took you 35 years to be ready. <laughs> so when you describe and position yourself now as somebody. 30 years, not 35, 30 years. Okay, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't add them five on there. If you don't, if you don't need them five, don't add it. <laughs> so 30 years, okay? <laughs> It took you 30 years to now say that you're in a place when you're ready. Mm -hmm. When you describe this place of being ready, especially against where you were prior, what were the things that you have now that you mm -hmm. feel make you ready? Mm. I have um, a deeper sense of, of self. Um, I have a love for me. You know, I feel whole, I feel complete. You know, I can listen to a love song and that love song is for me, mm. from me. Mm. From me. To be in that space where you just love you like that, you know, is, is you're coming from a place of wholeness and completion. I don't need you to make me something. I don't need you to give me anything. You know, I understand what my value is. I understand who I am. And I understand that this is a gift as you are, you know? So again, for me, now it's less about what I need and more about what you need. 
I'm looking at you and, I, you know, I, I love all your amazing characteristics and traits and qualities, but I also have to look at the things that in my mind fall a little short, miss the mark, weaknesses, if you will. And do I have the capacity to help you heal? Do I have the capacity to show up for you when you're in those spaces and when you're battling those triggers and whatever those you know demons, whatever that is, do I have the capacity to stand with you and help you heal, stand by your side and not inflame the situation, mm. not take it personal? Is your heart safe in my hands? That's what I'm asking myself. Is your heart safe in my hands? Mm. So... I think I'm ready. Sounds uh, like it. Sounds ready to me. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> it sounds ready to me. We need more ready young ladies and men out there. Oh, my God. Because a lot of them is still stuck in a desperation dating. You know? Yeah. And, and I think we, we talked about this a little bit, Ryan, off camera. One of the things that was huge for me, and I felt, you know, this is another thing that God was telling me to shut it down physically like physically shut it down, be celibate. And I've done that now for a few years. Oh man. I didn't think it was gonna I didn't think it was gonna take this long. So it's hot and when ready. I signed up. <laughs> hey, first, hot and ready. first of all, you got you, you got people logging off the video now. They like I'm done watching this. Right. I, ain't, I ain't watching this no more. I'm done. No, you, you you do you do have to shut it down. You do. You have to shut it down because that's a part of your healing. I couldn't I couldn't completely heal if I was still wrapped up in relationship because I was in relationship for the wrong reason. So in order to get me right, I had to really separate from that, you know, and the transformation and understanding and growth that has taken place has been astounding and it would not have happened any other way. So now when I meet people, see, it's so much easier to walk away from somebody who's not right for you when you haven't laid down with mm. them than when you have, especially as a woman, mm. you know? So yeah, I, I can really, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I don't, I don't, I don't need him. You see what I'm, it's, it's, I'm going to need him, but I don't need him. I don't need him to to give me something that I don't have. I don't need him to rescue me. I don't. I don't. I don't need that. It's a want. Don't you want your woman to want you? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Isn't that sexy? Absolutely. So sexy. Listen. How long? So wait. Just just for context, how long has it been? Long time. <laughs> September 14, 2026, 32 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Listen, and then let me tell you something. God, God got jokes. And to make matters worse, I found out like about six months ago that my, my testosterone was low. So it was like really messing with my energy. Mm. And then, you know, it's kind of like putting me in a funk. So now I got these testosterone pellets. Oh. You you ready to pop up, pop off right now? Right. <laughs> I'm ready to tear him to shreds. Honey. <laughs> I said he ain't gonna mess around and get hurt. So yeah. so so look, what's what's the key though? All right, because he, here's mm -hmm. believe it or not, what you're saying to lock it down. Some people are so far on the other side. Th that's mm -hmm. not even something realistic mm -hmm. to them. It's like you saying that is like, oh yeah, whatever. That that ain't happening. They they don't even believe it. They don't even believe. They think you lying right yep. now. They yep. think Ryan lying. They think <laughs> yep. they just they so far removed from that even being a possibility. So here's what I want to ask you. Yeah. How do you go to weaning yourself off? Mm. <laughs> I was gonna say so crazy. I weaning yourself <laughs> off. And moving yourself away from sex. How do you manage that spirit? How do you, how, how you do it? What's, what's the sauce? So, so for me, it was less about the sex and more about, I just wanted that physical connection. You know, like I was addicted to the physical connection. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? The sex comes with that, but just it, it goes beyond because it's not like as a woman, well, I, should, just, I mean, women can do what they want to do. But for me, I was always just intimate with my guy, whoever my partner is. I'm only just intimate with with you. But I would be picking people 
from us again from a space of 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 desperation and a lack of wholeness then you got these soul ties and it's you know it it gets it gets it gets it gets crazy and then you be you get um I'm, there's a, a word that keeps popping into my head that i'm trying not to use <laughs> use it that's what i'm thinking um, use it use yeah. it <laughs> no. um you have to unwind mm. You have to unwind because you get wound up in all these different, you know, and you it's it's an addiction and it doesn't even have anything to do with the person. Yeah. So you're not even seeing the person. It's a feeling. It's a it's a something. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a seduction. It's a craving. It's yeah. an unhealthy craving that you have. It's it's lustful. Oh yeah, I, it's lustful. But you mistake it for you think that's love, mm -hmm. but it's neediness and it's lust. And I was going from relationship to relationship to relationship. So when God, when the Holy Spirit told me to shut it down that was a part of the divine plan so i could really be delivered from that spirit that was a spiritual kind of situation so i could be delivered from that and get past that and now my temple is so holy and clean. oh yeah yeah and my king i'm, I'm glad you shared <laughs> oh, that because soul times is real it's a real real thing. and neediness and lust real. will have you in i mean the most precarious and odd and uh, troubling situation with people you know you ain't got no business yes. being with exactly one hundred thousand percent absolutely and you want to make choices from a whole place mm -hmm. you want to make choices from an aligned place from a place of knowing and when you're in that place of knowing there's no need I lack no good thing you know what <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean so I'm gonna make yeah I'm gonna make good make better decisions man I love that man yeah. shout out shout out to Sheree yeah. Zampino shutting that thing down. You know, I, I want to ask you this too because this is a really good. We on we on our healing energy as we closing this thing down here. Yes. Yes. Would it have taken you thirty years if you would have shut it down <laughs> twenty five years ago? Would it have taken? Would it would have still taken you this thirty? You know, I don't know. What I do know is that my process, Cherie's process, is perfect. Mm. So everything is in divine order, in divine timing, and I have no regrets. You know, it all works together for the good. But I will say, if I had to give somebody some advice, take a beat. Stop going from relationship to relationship. Love on you. You are your first love. You are your first love. And once you love you, oh. Now you're ready. I love that you are prioritizing self-love and you are extremely optimistic about relationships. I think it's, it's extremely yeah. refreshing. Man, it, it yeah. is refreshing. I mean, this whole conversation with you from before the cameras came on to now yeah. has been absolutely incredible. Sheree, you are a yeah. part of the Hardly Initiated family Back. now. Yeah. And listen, yes. we love you, man. I, I enjoyed this conversation tremendously. I really do appreciate you joining Me us today. Too. When, when you talk to the, the queens, it's like the first thing I think is like, I, I gotta get me a wife. <laughs> I gotta get me one. You got me motivated, right? You got me motivated. <laughs> that is true. Yes, yes. Everybody's not a wife, though. See, that's the problem. <laughs> right, right. Everybody's not a wife. He who finds a wife. Not a little girl waiting to be rescued. He who finds a wife, someone who understands who she is and operates from her dignity and her 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 honor, you know, and she's uncompromising with who God has created her to be, you know? Man. So Cherie, this was yeah, this was incredible, guys. Yeah. I want to know what you guys think about it. Let us know what your <laughs> thoughts are of this episode right down here below in the comments section. If you found some value, let me see you put the word value. And if you got anything else, you can go ahead and tell us that as well. Listen, like this show. Please subscribe. Those small actions help us grow and attract amazing personalities, people, minds, and thought leaders like the ones we're speaking to here today. So, Cherie, we thank you and honor you again for joining us here today, okay? Thanks for 
Thank you, Kings, for having me. It was a pleasure. And I can't wait to be in the building with you. I made you a promise. When I come to Atlanta, I'm coming through. Yeah, we, we got the hospitality <laughs> ready for you. We, we need that energy. ATL is we, ready. We all take me to Papa Dolls. You said take you where? You take That's me to Papa Do's? Oh, come on now. <laughs> we going. Absolutely. We going to Papa Do's, all right? It's done. It's done. It's sealed. Done deal. And we got it on camera, y'all. So if she come to Atlanta, if y'all see yes. it, look at her stories every day. <laughs> if y'all see in Atlanta and we don't know, just make the sure problem. you DM hardly initiate. <laughs> <laughs> But Sheree, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, God bless you. I appreciate you. And uh, it was a blessing here to share this opportunity with you, okay? Thank you. Blessing is all mine. Thank you. Okay. Let me talk to our people because y'all already know how we get up out of here. It was a blessing for you guys to be up in here. You guys know every Monday and Wednesday night, we have our live show at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure you tune in here with us. And if you're not already a part of the Initiate family, you got to make sure you become a part of of the initiate family and if you also don't man sheree when you come in town we gotta bless you we actually got these incredible especially now since you ready you ready for it we got these incredible dating decks that you need to have we have these hardly in love decks here that listen yo you let's gotta send, have let, these. Send those out to her honestly i would love to be able to send one of these over to you it's incredible. A hundred open-ended questions that our initiates have been raving about because, listen, we these going to start some conversations that you probably wouldn't even get into <laughs> yourself. Uh, it, ain't, it ain't nothing crazy, right? It's still going to be able to, it's going to keep your temple clean, you know, but it's going to be able to have some incredible conversation. Ah, perfect. There we go. Well, guys, what we're going to do is we're actually going to have that in the description here so you guys can go ahead and get your Harley and Love cards right here in the description of this video here but that's all we have for you guys here so y'all already know how we do it hardly initiated we are out